Way back in March, I reviewed the Note 9 Pro. It's been two months, a GST price hike, and several lockdowns later, I'm back again with the Note 9 Pro Max review this time. So is this worth purchasing or are there better alternatives out there? That's what we're gonna find out in today's video. Hey guys, Ash here from C4 Retech, and if you do find this review video interesting and helpful, please subscribe and turn on notifications by hitting that bell icon. Let's now get started. When it comes to the Note 9 Pro and the Pro Max, we have a lot of similarities. I mean, they're essentially the same phone, but with different optics. With that being said, there are a couple of important changes. So let's start with these changes first. The first one is that we now have a 64 megapixel primary camera with an f1.89 lens instead of the 48 megapixel f1.79 lens combo. This is the Samsung ISOCELL Bright GW1 sensor, and as expected, it takes some really sharp looking shots. The dynamic range in here is pretty good and the pictures come out looking very detailed. We have mostly natural colors, at times a bit cool, but if you want punchier results, we have pro color, so we can turn up the saturation using that. Now the real question here is, does it take better shots compared to that 48 megapixel GM2 on the Note 9 Pro? So to find out, here are some side by sides. They look really similar, don't they? The one difference is the color temperature of the Note 9 Pro seems to be a bit warmer. Dropping in, we can see that the textures on this balcony wall is sharper on the 16 megapixel snapshot by the Note 9 Pro Max. At a glance though, both cameras, they seem to produce equally good images and the 12 megapixel photos, they look plenty sharp. Now, would there be a bigger difference in the full resolution photos? Well, here they are 64 versus 48 megapixels. Once more, the difference here is really minimal and we had to zoom in all the way into that red tractor in the background to see the difference in details. Moving on to low light shots, we have a dedicated night mode in here and the 64 megapixel Samsung GW1 does quite well. We have a decent amount of detail and a lot of the color saturation is retained. So we don't end up with washed out images as is common in this segment. Something interesting that we noticed is that the Note 9 Pro Max, it decreases the shutter speed while keeping the ISO levels down, which means we get more light and less noise in our shots. Comparing it to the night mode shots taken by the Note 9 Pro, it's pretty clear that the Note 9 Pro Max is doing a much better job. I mean, it is called the Max after all, isn't it? Take this picture of a tree, for example. It's barely visible on the Note 9 Pro, but we can clearly make out the details with the Note 9 Pro Max. The GW1 sensor is the clear winner when it comes to low light. Now, the primary camera is also responsible for rear portraits, so let's take a look at how they turned out. Not a lot of difference between the two, but the subject does have more detail on the Note 9 Pro Max's shot. The edge detection is on par for the most part, after all, they are using the same algorithms as well as the same 2 megapixel depth sensor. Both phones are capable of shooting 4K 30fps video, and honestly, I felt like they were virtually indistinguishable here. Great punchy looking colors with nice detail levels, and even the dynamic range here is on point. We also have an option here to shoot at 1080p with EIS. The resulting footage is a lot more stable with way less noticeable bumps and shakes. Oh, and there's an option to shoot full HD video at 60fps and HD slow-mo at 960fps as well. We have an upgraded selfie shooter. This 32 megapixel camera takes some good looking shots. The selfies turned out sharp with nice skin tones, but the background, it does have a tendency to get overexposed. As far as selfie portraits go, the edge reduction works out quite well. Now comparing it to the selfie camera on the Redmi Note 9 Pro, despite the front camera having double the megapixels, the detail levels, they ended up feeling pretty similar across the board. Other than the primary 64, we have an 8 megapixel ultra wide, 5 megapixel macro, and a 2 megapixel depth sensor, making up the quad sensor array to the back of the Note 9 Pro Max. Like the rest of the phone, these three cameras are the same ones that we've seen before on the Redmi Note 9 Pro. Now, if some of these highlights have kind of slipped your mind, here's a quick little spec refresher. We have a premium glass sandwich design in here, sporting a 6.67 inch screen to the front and weighing in at just under 210 grams, the Note 9 Pro Max. It's not a phone that many would use single-handed. The rounded glass back makes it easy to hold, but thanks to the super reflective and glossy finish, this phone feels slippery in hand and ends up collecting a lot of fingerprints and smudges. So that's why I kept it in a protective case all the time. Another big one is the camera bump to the back. If we keep the Note 9 Pro Max on a flat table and then try typing on it, the phone just rocks around right to left thanks to how protruded that camera bump is. With the case on, the bump is slightly recessed, giving it a bit of added protection. Talking about protection, we have Corning's Gorilla Glass 5 to both the front and back. 
That's where we have this Full HD Plus IPS panel with a punch hole to the center. The Note 9 Pro series is all about symmetry in the design, or as Redmi is calling it, this is their aura balance design. The display itself is great for an IPS panel, the contrast levels are awesome, and it can get quite bright too. Powering all of this is the Snapdragon 720G. Benchmark scores aside, in real life, the 720G held up really well. We didn't face any lag or stutter while going about our day, and heck, it even handled demanding games pretty well. We played PUBG and it supported up to the high frame rate preset at HD graphical settings. Dialing it down to smooth though gave us the ultra frame rate option. On the memory side of things, we have 6 or 8 gig RAM options, so one more subtle improvement in here is that the base variant now comes with 6 instead of 4 gigs. As far as internal storage goes, we have 64 or 128 gigs of UFS 2.1 storage with the option for added expandability via a dedicated microSD card slot. Of course, one of the highlights of the Note 9 Pro Max is the battery life. It's the same 5020mAh battery as the regular Note 9 Pro, but it does ship with a 33W fast charger. So we can get it to 0 to 50 in about half an hour here. So we have rapid fast charging combined with MIUI 11 and an 8 nanometer chip. The result is excellent battery life. This phone easily lasted a full day on a single charge. Sometimes it even stretched well into day two. Now MIUI 11 is something that people have strong opinions about and I have to say that there are a few pre-installed apps here and the uh, Xiaomi app store as well as a few other system apps like music keep sending annoying push notifications but they can be turned off and as far as features and usability go MIUI 11 based on Android 10 it handles everything just fine. Now before we talk about the price let's quickly wrap up the sundries in here. One thing I love about the Note 9 Pro Max is the vibration motor. The haptic feedback is miles better than previous Redmi devices. The speakers are okay, they can get loud, but I wish it had a bit more bass and life to it. The sound output through the 3.5mm headphone jack is much better though. We also have a splash proof P2Y coating that should give some protection against the elements. As far as biometric security goes, we have face unlock as well as a side mounted capacitor fingerprint scanner. Both are pretty fast. Now generally, I don't like side mounted fingerprint scanners, but then again, with the onslaught of devices like the Poco X2, Redmi Note 9, as well as the Realme 6 series, I'm kind of getting used to them. Not a fan of the volume buttons on top of the fingerprint scanner though. They are a bit out of reach for me and I had to do some finger gymnastics to get there. But hey, Redmi is still one of the last brands to retain an AR plaster up top, and personally I find that quite useful. Overall though, my experience with the Redmi Note 9 Pro Max was largely positive, and at $16,499, I would have been happily recommending it had it not been for two other phones. The Poco X2 comes in at 1000 rupees more, but with a primary Sony sensor, better hardware, and a 120Hz screen, so gamers might want to actually get that. And photography enthusiasts might prefer spending 1500 bucks more for that telephoto camera, video features, not to mention the 90Hz screen that the Realme 6 Pro has to offer. Now does that mean the Note 9 Pro Max at 16500 is a bad buy? Not really, but unless you really like that aura balance design or better low light imaging, faster charging, if these are must haves for you then you could consider it, but otherwise there are better value for money options out there. So that's just my two cents on the Note 9 Pro Max. Now I wanna know what you guys think. Would you pick up a Note 9 Pro Max over the other options? Why or why not? Let me know via the comments below. And with that, we get to the end of this review. Hope you guys found it useful. If you did, thumbs up, share, subscribe, and turn on notifications by hitting that bell icon if you haven't yet. Thanks a lot for watching. Till next time, my name's Ash. You've been watching C4E Tech, and I'm signing off for now. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.